Hi everyone and welcome to this channel. So today, uh, well, I'm Josh, your attic insulator, and today we're going to be looking at roof vents. Uh, we're going to be looking at two different types of roof vents that I'm going to categorize. So you're going to have the static ones and then you're going to have the passive ones. So the passive ones are just the ones that on their own let the hot air out uh, of the attic or the, the air out of the attic. The static ones are the ones that spin, so like the turbines, the ones that I have in my roof right now, as well as uh, ones like the maximum, the tower, the taller ones that go above the peak. So let's take a look. <laughs> Okay, so let's get started. So we will start off with uh, static vents. So the static vents, they're the ones in my house. And so I have turbine vents. I have three of them in my house because I have two attics. So two turbine vents are at the top of my roof. And then there is one turbine vent that's in the lower attic section that's accessible through my garage. I've been an attic insulator for many years and the benefit of being an attic insulator actually is that you see these vents in action. So I know that a lot of roofers do not like the turbine vents from what I've read on the internet. My experience with them, and this is what I'm going to really focus on, is my experience with these turbine vents. Every time I've been in the attic, the Airflow has been better for these turbine vents because it doesn't take a lot of wind to have them start spinning. And at the same time, a lot of people are saying that they leak. But again, with my experience being in the attic while it was uh, blowing wind and snow as well as rain, I've been in all the seasons. I haven't seen one leak on my head. I was I was working in the attic. And so I'm not exactly sure uh, there's a lot of factors coming in when you're looking at snow infiltration as well as rain infiltration because again obviously if the turbines stop turning if there's obstruction if there's maybe even an animal that got stuck within the fins that's preventing it from turning properly obviously those are factors where yes if it does stop spinning then rain and snow will be able to get in. I want to focus mainly on the positives of these turbine vents that I have and that is that they draw air from the soffit very well and bring it up and uh, have it circulate, have all the excess moisture um, and heat, uh, especially during the summer. Leave your attic so it brings in a little bit cooler air and as air moves it obviously is a little bit cooler. So it does help with cooling down your attic. Of course, I have a very shallow attic, and so it's uh, I like these turbine vents in one way. There's one thing, though, um, with turbine vents or any type of venting, uh, what you do want is definitely to have your uh, attic ceiling air sealed as much as possible. Now we're talking about the bathroom fan having air sealing, any chimney that you have going through the attic, that should be air sealed as well. Uh, any pot lights, any sort of lights, uh, that's where all the air leakage will happen, plus your plumbing lines um, and your electrical wires that are going through the attic. You want to get those air sealed because what will happen is if you don't, like I said in the previous video with the soffit intake, if you don't have enough soffit or proper soffit uh, ventilation, then what can happen is these turbine vents, if they spin really, really fast and during very windy days, then the air will actually be sucked from the house and into the attic instead of from outside through the soffit and into the attic. Which basically means during the winter time especially, you're going to have, well, hot moist air getting sucked into the attic and then your furnace is going to be working a lot harder than it needs to because you've got massive heat loss. Now going over to the maximum vents, um, I've heard that it's an absolutely great product. The way that it works is you have wind that goes through it on one side and then it comes out the other. So just the movement of air, uh, because obviously the maximum air vent does not rotate like a turbine vent does. 
it will attract the air moving up and then it'll have the hot air uh, exiting those fins as well. The other thing with the Maximums is that they do have a weather um, shield as that prevents any blowing rain or snow from getting into those fins uh, because of course it doesn't spin and so the fins are always open to the elements. Uh, so a lot of people are wondering how does that work where there's no rain that goes into these? Well, it's because they have some extra protection on the side so that, that um, it uh, prevents that blowing in uh, rain or snow. If you're going to install any of these, of course, you know, turbine or the maximums, you want to have the nice level. Um, and your roofer obviously will know this before you install it because if you have the turbines on a slant then it won't be able to spin as well as if it was level. Also you want these types of vents to be above the peak of your roof and so for the maximum for instance they do have the option where you can install them directly on the peak of your roof which is optimal because then you like these vents, uh, any which direction the wind will go, it'll pick up that wind and it'll properly ventilate your attic. Uh, the difference from what I've seen uh, on the Maximum websites is they've compared the Maximum versus the turbine vent. And I think uh, with regards to the um, cubic feet per minute of draw for air, the Maximums can do pretty close to three to four times the turbine vents. So once again, you don't really need a lot of these vents uh, to get proper air circulation because I'm sure one of these vents will be good enough for a close to 1500 square foot house or well mine's a thousand square feet. So for sure I would only need the one. All right, so now let's talk about the passive vents. So that and my list includes the gable wall vents. So that's the uh, gable vents from one side to the other. You definitely want a couple of those. Def you don't want to have just one gable vent on one end of your house uh, because that may not work as well as you want it to, all depending on the design of your roof. Make sure that you've got the proper design, proper vents for whatever roof style that you have. The next passive vent are the short uh, turtle-like vents that I see on most new homes. And you've also, I've also got the ridge vent, which spans along the, well, the ridge of your entire roof. The gable vents, they definitely work a little bit differently because those are somewhat like the maximums where they work very well when there's high winds and then they don't work as well when there is no wind. But uh, the ridge vent and the turtle vents, they are typically at the very top of your roof and so that's they let the hot air escape because hot air rises and they do that uh, just on their own without any moving parts and so there's a little bit slower air filtration but we'll compare the ridge vent and say the turtle vent so the ridge vent the best thing is to have uh, the ridge the entire length of your roof and then so the roof itself or your attic will get equal amount of air filtration from one end of your roof to the other. Whereas with the troll vents, you definitely need to be strategic as to where to place them. A lot of new homes have a lot of these vents because again, they want to do the same effect as the ridge vent. What I do find with the turtle vents is that they only seem to be installed on the one side of your roof and so um, they will most likely react better but only in certain wind conditions and so that's uh, what I find is a drawback on those types of venting and so you know if you do want to which I don't typically see is you have two turtle vents on both sides of your roof because then you can capture that ventilation so you can have the outside wind uh, increase the efficiency of these vents. There's one major downside that uh, I have with the ridge vent and the turtle vent is that where I'm at in Canada there is a lot of snow fall and so those two types of venting get covered with snow and that means that there is no ventilation for a certain period of time until that snow is melted off of these vents and then the ventilation is freed up again. 
Uh, so that's where I find there's potential condensation when I go up into the attic for these types of venting. And uh, so that's uh, definitely less desirable. With the cable vents, of course, the cable vents never get covered with snow because they're on the side of your house. And so they will always have free airflow. Uh, so that's definitely one positive on that end. One more thing that I wanted to point out, which is that with ridge vents, say that you have a metal roof. Um, during the winter, uh, you know that metal sweats very easily and so any little bit of condensation or heat loss that you get from your the hot air that's coming from your house, say, and then gets infiltrated through your attic over time, uh, say that it's plus 20 in your house and then it's minus 20 or even minus 10 outside condensation will happen and it could drip on your insulation so uh, there's uh, probably certain designs where it will uh, absorb some of that water and not allow the water to directly uh, get hit um, and back down into the attic uh, because that's uh, one of the downsides I've seen personally with uh, those types of venting. The next thing that I wanted to talk about is your roof design. So as an attic insulator, I have seen many times where some areas in the attic are closed off. And so if those areas are closed off, it's very important those closed off areas have an intake and an exhaust within their air system, or else you are going to have some major condensation and mold issues. So if you have a unconditioned attic, that's what I'm talking about, you need to have proper ventilation. If of course it's a conditioned attic or a hot roof, then that's a completely different design. Next time, just look at your roof outside of your house and see the orientation of your roof. So, and understand, okay, do I have, from when I look into my attic, do I see the entire attic? If not, does, do I, am I able to see all of the attics from all of my attic hatches? So I've got, in my house, two attic hatches. I can see my attic from these two attic hatches and so I know that there's an intake and an exhaust and so I'm covered that way. I've been in renovation projects where I crawled into a attic and cut the underside of the roof so that it allowed me to not only access the area that was under insulated but also provided airflow to that attic space because by cutting those walls you now allow for airflow to transfer from one section to another. Again, if you have a much bigger house there could be some firewalls that need to be installed say between your garage and your house. If that is the case you definitely want to discuss it with your roofer to make sure that if it's an unconditioned attic that you have the proper ventilation. Some nightmares that I have seen the roof vents are partially cut and not placed square against the hole. I don't know why that happens. If you're going to hire a roofer just you know be polite but definitely make sure that those roof vents are installed properly. So that is just my word of advice to you um, because once again, you, it is your house and I'm sure me personally, every job that I go to, I treat every job like it was my own house. Hope all of these tips helped and uh, make sure that you click that like button, that you subscribe to my channel and you hit that notification button and we will see you next week. Have a great day.